Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection February 10, 2022 Thursday Memorial of Saint Scholastica Virgin The Fifth Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Scholastica, like her brother, dedicated herself to God from early youth. Information on the Virgin Scholastica is very scanty. In his second book of dialogues, Pope Saint Gregory has described for us the last meeting between brother and sister. His sister Scholastica, who had been consecrated to God in early childhood, used to visit with him once a year. On these occasions he would go to meet her in a house belonging to the monastery, a short distance from the entrance. For this particular visit he joined her there with a few of his disciples and they spent the whole day singing God's praises and conversing about the spiritual life. When darkness was setting in, they took their meal together and continued their conversation at table until it was quite late. Then the holy nun said to him, Please do not leave me tonight, brother. Let us keep on talking about the joys of heaven till morning. What are you saying, sister? He replied, You know that I cannot stay away from the monastery. The sky was so clear at the time. There was not a cloud in sight. At her brother's refusal Scholastica folded her hands on the table and rested her head upon them in earnest prayer. When she looked up again, there was a sudden burst of lightning and thunder accompanied by such a downpour that Benedict and his companions were unable to set foot outside the door. By shedding a flood of tears while she prayed, this holy nun had darkened the cloudless sky with a heavy rain. The storm began as soon as her prayer was over. In fact, the two coincided so closely that the thunder was already resounding as she raised her head from the table. The very instant she ended her prayer the rain poured down. Realizing that he could not return to the abbey in this terrible storm, Benedict complained bitterly. God forgive you, sister. He said. What have you done? Scholastica simply answered. When I appealed to you, you would not listen to me. So, I turned to my God and he heard my prayer. Leave now if you can. Leave me here and go back to your monastery. This, of course, he could not do. He had no choice now but to stay. In spite of his unwillingness, they spent the entire night together and both of them derived great profit from the holy thoughts they exchanged about the interior life. The next morning Scholastica returned to her convent and Benedict to his monastery. Three days later as he stood in his room looking up toward the sky, he beheld the sister's soul leaving her body and entering the heavenly court in the form of a dove overjoyed at her eternal glory. He gave thanks to God in hymns of praise. Then, after informing his brethren of her death, he sent some of them to bring her body to the abbey and bury it in the tomb he had prepared for himself. The bodies of these two were now to share a common resting place, just as in life their souls had always been one in God. Her tomb is at Monte Cassino. First Reading a reading from the first book of Kings. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4 to 13. When Solomon was old his wives had turned his heart to strange gods, and his heart was not entirely with the Lord, his God, as the heart of his father David had been, by adoring Estarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not follow him unreservedly as his father David had done. Solomon then built a high place to Chemish, 
the idol of Moab, and to Molech, the idol of the Ammonites, on the hill opposite Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives who burn incense and sacrifice to their gods. The Lord, therefore, became angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. For though the Lord had forbidden him this very act of following strange gods, Solomon had not obeyed him. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is what you want, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I enjoined on you, I will deprive you of the kingdom and give it to your servant. I will not do this during your lifetime, however, for the sake of your father David, it is your son whom I will deprive, nor will I take away the whole kingdom. I will leave your son one tribe for the sake of my servant David and of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 106 verse 3 to 4, 35 to 36, 37 and 40 Let our response be, Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit us with your saving help. Response. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. But they mingled with the nations and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare for them. Response. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. And the Lord grew angry with his people, and abhorred his inheritance. Response. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Alleluia. James chapter 1 verse 21 BC. Alleluia, Alleluia. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 7 verse 24 to 30. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered the house and wanted no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syroponician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Then he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Was the Lord having a bad day? Was he sick and tired of all these sick people coming to him? In today's gospel, it sure sounds like it. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered the house and wanted no one to know about it. But he could not escape notice. It always seems as though people want to speak to me. Visit me or call on me right before I take a break for breakfast, lunch or dinner. Right after I change into my pajamas right before bed, or right before I take a flight and leave for vacation. I am sure you can understand what I mean. So, was the Lord under a lot of stress? No, I don't think so. Why? Because he knew how to be both humble and truthful. 
I can get along with just about anyone in this world. What makes it possible? The fact that I can tell them exactly what I think and I can accept whatever they think. I might be wrong and they might be wrong. But it is never a fada. How often does one hear? I don't like such and such person or I don't care to be around this or that person. What this really means is. I could be upfront with this or that person. I think an individual's stress level goes up when they can have an honest dialogue with someone or when they can't be humbled by someone. After all, who feels like walking on eggshells? Who feels like weighing every single word you say? Who likes being told the truth? It's not worth it. The Lord was very upfront with everyone. Some liked it. Others hated it. As for me, I most enjoy being with those who can handle it. A saint once said, Charity begins with honesty, and honesty is humility. You meet many wonderful couples and families. Often, I cannot even remember how I first met them. It may have been through their children on retreat. But in the six years I have been in this town, I have felt at home in their homes. About two weeks ago, I had dinner with one such family. Their two sons invited me to go to school with them on best friend day. I have had dinner over their home on countless occasions and have heard their confessions whenever they asked. About three weeks ago, I heard Mary's confession. Things were going well. Life was good. This past Tuesday, she sent me a text message. Yesterday afternoon she died. That evening I received a haunting text from her daughter. My mom passed away. I couldn't believe it. Mary was a devoted wife, a loving mother. A wonderful spiritual sister. A great friend, a very holy woman. I don't know how old she was. But I believe Mary and I were just a few years apart. Mary was an incredible woman. She loved God. She loved her faith. She was a champion for orthodoxy. She was a believer in high standards and high morals. She loved to stand up for the church and loved to stand her ground. But I believe Mary's greatest attribute was her honesty and humility. She knew how to be honest and humble with everyone in a loving and God-filled manner. The Lord gave her a tough life and a short life. One could even say, He gave her scraps. But come to think of it, all our lives are lived off of scraps when compared to the banquet in heaven. How often must we remind ourselves that the only way to live life is by committing ourselves to it? Therefore, don't live it for the now or later, but for now and later. Thank you.